the thorough analysis of the origin of species, lesson 12. Charles Darwin says, The Creation, part 2. This is a continuance of chapter 2. The remaining content is of the chapter 2 and chapter 3 are summarized here. Where many species of a genus have been formed through variation, circumstances have been favorable for variation, and hence we might expect that the circumstances would generally be still favorable to variation. On the other hand, if we look at each species as a special act of creation, there is no apparent reason why more varieties should occur in a group having many species than in one having few. A special act of creation in this paragraph is equal to a separate act of creation. The term genus, which first show up here, is an upper step of the last step, species, in the classification of the organisms. The family tree is a system organized after naturalists consider deeply and arrange the analogies between organic beings. Charles Darwin proved by experiment that species of the larger genera vary more frequently than the species of the smaller genera. It is natural probably that the more accidents occur in the bigger group is because surroundings of the big group are favorable for the variation of the big group and are unfavorable for the variation of the small group. This tendency is inexplicable by a separate act of creation which has no concept of probability. In all these respects, the species of large genera present a strong analogy with varieties, and we can clearly understand these analogies if species once exist as varieties and thus originated. Whereas these analogies are utterly inexplicable if species are independent creations. The exact meaning of analogy implies that the difference between varieties is extremely minute. Analogy between individuals consisting of a genus says that there was a gradual variation of the original form and that it was delivered to the descendants. To make a long story short, it is explained easily. If a brown horse and a white horse had been originated from a genus, but the similarity between varieties is inexplicable if a brown horse and a white horse had been created separately. That is to say, their analogy is explained simply considering the change of the creatures, but the way of thinking that the organisms are immutable cannot make us understand the analogy of the varieties. Chapter 3 Chapter 3 is on struggle for existence. We can find them very frequently in Charles Darwin's book. It is very coarse of variation, that is, the evolution. He describes the organic being's struggle for life as follows. Creatures struggle for their existence even in the Arctic regions or on the borders of an utter desert. Competition between individuals disappear in the Arctic regions or snow-capped summits or absolute deserts, and 
the increase and the decrease of individuals depend on the influence of nature. We cannot confirm all elements to check the increase of individuals, but the change of climate, a drought, and a quantity of food will play an important role in the determination of the number of the organisms. Because all plants and animals are tending to increase at a geometrical ratio and a quantity of food is limited, organic beings' struggle for life is unavoidable. Also, because species in a genus, for example, a brown horse, a white horse, and a zebra have a likeness in habitats and physical constitutions, and because they seek for same prey in the same region, competition between the same species is fiercer than between the different species. Hence, the geometrical tendency to increase is checked by destruction at some period of life. However, variations are slight in the physical conditions of life. Species tend to preserve them and are inherited by the offspring, if they be in any degree profitable to individuals of a species. Organic beings' existence in some place verifies that they are adapted to the surroundings. Charles Darwin says that adaptation is a result of variation and a process of the adaptation is natural selection, and it is the survival of the fittest to survive in those conditions. Organic beings don't persevere spontaneously in their efforts to survive in the rigorous environment. Beings adjusted casually to the surroundings keep their vital power in nature. This vitality is the source of the evolution. I finish today's presentation. Shalom.